So recently, Lindsay and I have been going through some of our past stuff, and I found a ton of old track ribbons, like track and field. I used to run the hurdles, long jump, four by four, 800, all this stuff. I just had a stack of them. That got me thinking, uh, maybe I could do like a little flat design ribbon. So this type of ribbon is a little bit different than the ones that I found. Um, it's a little bit more like something you would get at a fair. Like if you won, I don't know, basket weaving at the local fair or something. Uh, but I thought it'd be neat to show you how to do that in Adobe Illustrator. So let's get started. All right, so this is the ribbon that we're going to create. Um, I was going back and forth on some of the shadows, but you could really do them however you'd like. I'm going to keep it out here for reference and we're just going to build out this ribbon over yonder. Okay, so I started with the star tool as a matter of fact, and I'm going to show you how to adjust the star tool as you use it. So it's probably going to look like my ribbon because I have that uh, already set, but if I bring it back to something that you guys might be a little bit more familiar with, like this is probably about what it's gonna look like when you get started. What you can do with this, while you have it, I still have it held right here. If I press up and down on the arrow keys, it's going to add or subtract uh, points to my star. And then if I hold command and kind of use my mouse to go in and out, it's going to make those points shallower or pointier, I guess. So we'll do that here. I'm gonna press up to add a bunch more points and then I'm going to hold command or control on a PC and kind of move my mouse in and out to get that shape that I want. So we can do something like this and then I could subtract a couple more points. You can do this in any order. I'm still holding my mouse button and I think something like that would work pretty well. Now the blue that I chose, if you just swing into your color picker, I believe this, this could be the darker one, I'm not really sure, but something in this area, up and down right here, is gonna be the sort of lighter, darker, and shadows of my ribbon. And this is the first place ribbon, so it's, it's gonna be blue, because you know, first place, right? All right, hit okay to that, select your color, whatever it might be. Now I'm gonna zoom in here, and one thing I wanna do on these stars, if you click and hit the A key, that's the shortcut key for the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow in your toolbar, you're gonna see all of the um, uh, corner widget points. And if you don't see those, go up to view, down to hide or show corner widget, and you're gonna be able to see those. Also, go ahead and make sure smart guides are checked while you're in there. It's gonna help us line things up later. If you don't see your corner widget, that's probably because you're in CS6 or maybe an earlier version of CC. I have a couple tutorials on how to round corners, but really it's gonna be rough rounding corners like this if you don't update to uh, CC. So what we can do here is just click and drag on one of these points and I'm barely gonna pull it in. In fact, I'm not even gonna really move from where I clicked it and I'm gonna let go. And that's just gonna soften those points to round them off everywhere. Um, both the outer and inner points are all rounded now. So that just kind of helps soften up the design a little bit. Okay, we'll go a little bit quicker now. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab my ellipse tool. The shortcut key for that is L. I'm gonna find my center point here, click on it, hold shift and alt or shift and option if you're on a Mac. And we're gonna pull out a circle to create the center of our star. And once we do that, I'm gonna double click my fill and just bring the color picker down a little bit. This is the darker portion, the darker center portion of our, uh, our ribbon. Once we do that, we're gonna create the bottom section and that's just gonna be a rectangle. That rectangle tool is M. I'm going to go ahead and just create a rectangle about the length I want and the width I want. Now it's not in the center, so I'm gonna go back to that selection tool, select this, hold shift, select that center circle, re-click on that center circle to align to that key object and just make sure it's horizontally aligned to the center. If I don't see it move, sometimes I'll just go left and then right. That's just a little thing I have to do myself to be like, I know it's in the center. Uh, but once we do that, we can actually send this piece to the back. Uh, that's gonna be right click, arrange, send to back or shift command left bracket. Uh, shift control left bracket on a PC. Okay. Let's add a point to the center of this guy. So we're gonna switch over to the pin tool. Shortcut key for that is P. Just move over until it says intersect. You know you're in the center. 
and that's because we have those smart guides on. Switch over to the direct selection tool, click on just that point. Use your arrow keys or shift and your arrow keys to create these, this bottom part of the ribbon. Uh, sort of to the style that you want. Now I'm gonna select these bottom three points with my direct selection tool. Remember that's the white arrow. And I'm gonna get to my little corner widget icons again. And I'm gonna round these off, but just the tiniest bit, uh, just to make it a little bit less pointy on those. Um, just kind of softens up the design when you don't have those really sharp edges. So back in here, we're getting pretty close. What we're gonna do now is add our shadows in. Um, I think what I wanna do with this guy is actually expand him out a little bit, and we're gonna use the scale tool to do that. It's one I don't use very often. Uh, the shortcut key is S. It looks kinda like this in your toolbar. And it, right now, its uh, reference point is in the center. So if I just click and drag to the side, it's gonna scale it and you can just kind of mess with this. I think if we hold some of our modifiers, for instance, I'm holding shift right now and it's locking it into only horizontal scaling. So that helps. Uh, it's not like bumping way up or down like this. So hold shift while you do that and kind of scale it out, uh, out and down a little bit works just like that. So that's one way to do that. Uh, the scale tool can be a little bit finicky, but just play with it and it really helps you keep something centered and scale it out from the center. All right, so we're just gonna add our shadows in next. So rectangle tool, maybe grab a little bit darker color in here, hit okay, and then create a rectangle. The first shadow is gonna be the shadow over the top of the ribbon up here. Switch to my selection tool. Make sure I have pretty much everything selected up here. Shift M is the shape builder tool. The icon looks like this over there. I'm gonna hold option or alt to subtract the outside portion of this and now I have just this inside shape. Switch back to the selection tool. Shortcut key is V for that. And now I have, I have this shape right there. See that? I move it out and then I hit Command Z or Control Z to undo to move it back. But this is chilling right there and what I can do with this guy is just maybe make him like 15% opacity, something like that. So just, just the hint of a shadow there. And then this bottom shadow, I kind of made it a little bit different than normal. Uh, it's a little bit offset. So as if the light is coming from the left and you get a little bit darker down here, it's kind of, it's kind of um, showing the dimension in the top of the ribbon, if you will. So what we're gonna do is hit the L key, that's for the ellipse tool, create a circle by holding shift. And it doesn't really matter how large your circle is, we're just gonna create it and make sure that it comes across our ribbon just like that. I'm gonna bump it down a little bit on the left side and I'll just kind of off-center it so it's it's uh, creates that nice little loop shape. I'm gonna select that and the bottom portion of the ribbon, not the top. Shift M, Shape Builder, hold Option or Alt, subtract out that side. V is the sh shortcut for the Move tool uh, or the Selection tool. And if I just hold Shift and select these bottom two pieces, Right click, arrange, send to back. Now they're underneath there. That shadow like we did with the other one, we can go down to like 15%, 25%, doesn't matter what the percentage is. Uh, and, and there we go. Now the one thing, the last thing I wanna do here is just to signify that this has a little bit of roundness to it. I don't know what I did with my hand there, but a roundness to it. What I'm gonna do is go back to that pin tool, shortcut key is P, find the center point here, Hold option until I get this little loopy intersection corner tool thing and I can pull this, right? I can I can pull this and 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 make a bend in my shape here. If I make just ever so the slightest little bend and keep it in the center so it's nice and even, it's just gonna give a hint at the roundness of that top portion. So that you know it's kinda it's kinda personal choice, but that's that's what I'm gonna do there. Uh, next, you just wanna add your numbers, right? First place, so I'm gonna use the type tool out here and the font I'm using is titling. It's called titling, just overall. And I think it's, I think you can sync it. If not, I mean, just use whatever font you want, uh, but that's just the one that I'm using. You can see it over here, actually in the character panel. Uh, I obviously wanna make it white, so I'm gonna change the fill to white. We've got that. I'm gonna put him in here and just click on that circle click on it again, key object, and align that to the center. 
which is gonna get close, but I'm gonna visually kind of do it here, just like that. All right, I think this needs to be bigger, so I'm holding Shift and Option or Alt to kind of scale it up a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna create the S and the T lowercase. Those guys need to be white and they're gonna be a little bit bigger as well. So we're gonna scale him up, holding Shift, of course. Once we get that in there, maybe that goes right up here. And of course we need to center this a little bit better. So it's gonna be a little bit offset Maybe something like that. You could always hit Command or Control G. And you can group that together and then align to key object. But with something like this, it might be better to just visually align it. And it might need to be a little bit bigger. I'd like to match what I did in the other one. Maybe something like that. So there we go. Well, actually no. We got one more thing here. There's a shadow, there's like a drop shadow underneath, but this isn't any normal drop shadow. You see, what I did here was I selected everything. Uh, well, you can just select, literally select everything. Hold Option or Alt, duplicate this out. Now, down here in my Pathfinder option with everything selected is a merge tool. And if I click that, it's gonna merge everything. Obviously it didn't merge the text, so we can just delete out the text, but it merged everything. So now everything is, uh, or this shape is a single shape. And what we can do with this single shape, I can make it a little bit darker here. And now it's like a, it's like a drop shadow that you can sort of just play with and move to wherever you want. However, I do want to send it all the way to the back. So it's underneath everything, but now we have this little drop shadow. And if I just grab everything here and I move it all back over here, to my background, which is just a rectangle. And it's, I just picked a color. It's just like a dark purpley hue. Um, and I'm gonna make sure that's arranged to the back as well. Always the background, send it to the back. Uh, there you go. You know, you've got the little drop shadow underneath. Maybe it needs to be a little bit darker. Do like 50%. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be finicky there for 30%, something like that. I can move this little drop shadow around so I don't have to play with the actual drop shadow effect. I could just merge my whole shape together and that creates like, and, and then make it dark and make it 40, 30% opacity. And it's kind of like a drop shadow I can just play with on my own. So I kind of like that effect right there. Uh, and there is our first place ribbon. Uh, I hope that was easy enough to follow and I hope it looks okay. I, I mean, I think it looks fine. Uh, kind of neat. Uh, if you're second place, it's going to be red. And if you're third place, I'm pretty sure it's yellow. Hang on. Hang on a sec. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, actually white. I think white is third place. Yellow might be fourth place. I got a, I got a couple ribbons in my time. Weird flex, I know. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching you guys. Subscribe for more tips and tutorials. I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. I'll see you next time. A lot of these are uh, 400 relay. This is from like middle school. Did the high hurdles, a lot of those. Uh, that's from high school. Long jump. Did you guys, anybody uh, run track and field or maybe you did like a field event there? Long jump, high jump. Anything like that? Hurdles? If you did hurdles, I want to know.